Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.com and this video is about downloading uh, JetBrains IDEs. Okay, and I'm going to focus primarily on RubyMine, but just to kind of walk you through, JetBrains is a company uh, that is makes really great IDEs. Okay, and they make them for pretty much most languages. So this is the JetBrains website, JetBrains.com, and you can see all their different IDEs here. Okay, um, basically a couple of them do have free versions, so if you go for Python, PyCharm, as a community version that is free okay for you if you want to start doing python okay and also i think uh intellij idea also has a community version but that has a community a free community version all the other ones okay now i'm going to focus on ruby mine which is from ruby here there's just the pro version and you get a free 30-day trial Okay, so you can use it without having to register it for the first 30 days, and after 30 days, then some of the features will turn off. Okay, and there's different ways to install it, which you can see here. So if you're on Ubuntu, you can just type in, use Snap. If you're on Mac, you can just download it this way. And if you're on Windows, you just download the exe, you just download the installer, depending on which operating system you're in. Pretty easy peasy. Okay, although it is definitely worth getting a JetBrains subscription, uh, the IDs are pretty awesome. Okay, let me just let's see, let's take a look what the pricing would be if you want to get all of them. Um, here, buy. Okay, well, if it's just Ruby Mine, it's one ninety nine a year. If you wanted to get all of the IDEs, six forty nine. If you are a student, okay, and you have proof that you are a student. Well, actually, this is for organizations. For individuals, it's cheaper. Okay, so all the product is two forty nine. Uh, for the entire year, okay. And then, if you're an, if you're a student or a teacher, you might be able to go through one of these special programs. But there is an approval process, um, so you won't get an answer like right away. But you know, you can uh, look into some of these other options. Okay, so that's where you download it. Okay, and I'm again I'm focusing on Ruby, so I'm assuming you have Ruby installed. So now let's open up Ruby Mine. Ruby mine, do I have it here? No, I installed it a weird complicated way. So I have to do this. Uh, Ruby mine, I think. Do I have where do I have it? Under no. Uh what command do I have it under? Ruby. Mm. Okay, I wanna pause this, go look at my custom commands. Okay, I got it. My I have mine under a custom command A M Ruby mine. It's been a while. Okay, so that'll open it up. Mm, yep, there it goes. Okay, so then you'll end up with this ID here. I'm gonna create a new project. And the cool thing about like all these JetBrains IDEs is they generally have like templates you can use here in the back. So if you want to create like a web application here and you want it's react app you can do that if you're creating a rails app there's a now you know also the different kind of cool stuff okay stuff with the gem i'm just gonna start with an empty project okay and then we can choose what folder we're building building it in here i'm gonna do home alex said do i have a folder ready for this i'm just gonna do it in my development folder so let me go up Folder. Actually, no, it should be in Alex Merced. Development. Teaching. I'll make a new folder in here. We'll call this JetBrains. And then in here, I'll have a folder called RubyMine. Okay, and so I'm making the project in there. Okay, actually, I think I want to make go... I think I want to go one folder deeper and make a folder called Project One. Project One. There we go. Okay, so then I create the project and it's setting it all up. And then here we are. Okay, so right now it's an empty folder. And just to give you a quick tour of this IDE, there's a terminal down here. So you can see right down here, there's a little terminal. I can open that up. And there I have access to my terminal. Now, if I want to create a new file, I can right click right here on the folder and I can say new and see it has all sorts of types of files it can generate for me right away. I just want a basic Ruby file. Okay, and we're just going to call this 
Hello World. And then it should automatically make it .rb. So, yep, hello world.rb. I am going to put a basic a hello world thing here. So it puts hello world. And I think that should be it. It's been a while. And again, you'll see, like, see, like, it gives you, like, little suggestions or complaints. So, cannot find puts. Or is it just put? It's been a while. Okay, no Ruby interpreter configured for the project. That's if you want to use like the little built-in thing. We can configure that if we want. Okay, Ruby SDK. Well, we have my I have 2.7 installed, so I'm just gonna select that. Okay. okay let's see here. Put. Pretty sure it's puts. Okay. But then I'll just go in here and type in Ruby. That's the command. Hello world dot rb. And there you go, see, hello world. Okay. Simple as that. Okay, and I can add more files in my project here. And then as we bring in more libraries, it keeps track of it here. Okay. Now, what happens in Ruby is that Ruby uses, kind of like in Node, you use a package.json to keep track of your libraries. Okay, in Ruby, you use what's called a gem file. So let's see if they have a quick way to make a gem file. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we'll just do this. New file, we'll just call it gem file, uppercase G file. Okay. And the gem file is just where we can like list our requires. So you can do something like require, I'm gonna require Sinatra, because I can make this really simple. Require Sinatra. Let's see here. That little squiggly line means it's complaining about something. That's fine. Okay, and let me just go back to my Sinatra readme here. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. I mean, I've already installed Sinatra in the past, so I think once you install it once, you don't install it again. Um, okay. So Sinatra is kind of like the equivalent of Express in, in uh, Ruby World, where it's very minimalist. So let's just like get slash this is still sort of a new framework for me so so we're going to get the root route do and then all we're going to return is hello world oh wait wait i'm doing this in the gem file not do this in the gem file okay oh no no this is just right the, what i'm supposed to write here is gem sinatra there we go okay the gem Sinatra is going to be in the gem file. So let's do that. Okay. And then in the hello world RB, here's where we can require Sinatra. Require Sinatra. Because see, the gem file tells it which gems to load up. Uh, and then when I use the requires, I'm going to look to see if that library is installed. Now again, it's really, really looking inside my local Ruby library repository. But let's say you installed it on your computer, you could use Bundler, which is like npm for Ruby, and be like bundle, run bundle on it, bundle install. It'll read the gem file and install any libraries you haven't installed yet. In the same way, you could run like npm install with a package.json. But I already have Sinatra installed, so I don't have to worry about that part. So we require Sinatra. And I want to create a route, so just be get, because it's going to be a get route, slash, because it's the root, and then we do do, and then I return something, I'm just going to return hello world. I don't even have to write the word return, I'm pretty sure, because it's an implicit return, so there's nothing, it's not doing anything else. So in Ruby, it'll generally assume, if you don't write the word return, any value the last line will resolve to gets returned. So, yeah, that should work. And literally it, that's a server. Now I can just run that file, so I can sit there and do uh, Ruby hello world. And see, since I required Sinatra, Sinatra by default is just going to run a server on localhost 4567. So literally, that was all the code you needed for a server. Sinatra is pretty neat that way. Um, okay, so I go to localhost 4567 hello world. Cool. Okay. Now, if I didn't, let's say, 
control C, I'll just kill the server. So again, this all works the same um, as just using normal terminal because it is just the normal terminal. But again, let's pretend that you just downloaded this project of mine and you didn't have uh, Sinatra installed on your computer. You could just type in bundle. And you might have to download bundle separately. Bundle may not just come in with your plain vanilla Ruby install. So you, so you may have to look up how to install what's called bundler. But you would just type in like bundle install. And it's going to like, see so it goes to use bundle, see where the bundle gem is installed. Okay. And it basically went by really quick because all that stuff was already installed. So, okay, finally files may not be writable, so sudo is needed, but I have all those already. So, yeah, that's pretty much a quick tour of sort of the Ruby world. So, again, Ruby mine is the IDE. You require libraries just like normal. You keep track of all your dependencies in the gem file. Bundler is the software that will check the gem file so you can install it. Okay, if you need to install a new gem, so I'm not as familiar with a bunch of Ruby gems, so let's see here. Uh, Ruby backend frameworks. It's already got Ruby on Rails and Sinatra. Um, let me see here. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's go to github.com. Ruby backend framework. It's fun to like learn about new things this way. Uh, Ruby API client framework, framework for creating powerful admin backends with Ruby on Rails, Ruby web framework. That sounds like what I'm looking for. Let's see here, install. So see here, you'll just do gem install flame. So I'll do gem install flame. Oh, I'm saying my, for my particular computer, I gotta do sudo, sudo gem install flame. Oh, I misspelled gem. Okay, so it downloads the gem. So now the gem's installed. And I can include it in my gem file now if I wanted to. So I can be like gem flame. And now I can use the thing. Okay, so then here's some example code. So I could try that out. So class index controller. I'm not going to really read and try to understand all this right now but I can just go back to my hello world. Hello world, copy this code. And I probably need to require flame here. Okay. I'm assuming it'll tell me what server we're running on when we run the file. So bundle install ruby hello world rb and i probably need to read the docs more because again i just grabbed the random framework hoping it would just ran magically work so but the point is you guys get the idea you install gem is the command to install so gem install gem gem all that stuff kind of like npm gem files the equivalent of your package.json okay and you still use the word required to bring in the libraries Okay, um, yeah, so that's a quick tour of downloading the RubyMine IDE and a quick tour of sort of the Ruby ecosystem. And hopefully uh, my name is, oh, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day. Make sure to go join the Slack channel for Dev Nursery over there at devnursery.com. Also uh, join the uh, Discord channel for devnursery.com. You'll meet lots of cool developers there who are hanging out, willing to help out, want help, all sorts of good stuff. And uh, yeah, just keep, keep, uh, keep on watching the videos, keep on liking them, keep on subscribing. Thank you very much.